In this online lecture, we're going to discuss another factor that affects pKa, and that is hybridization. And the way this rule works is the more S character, think the stronger the acid. Let me show you how this rule works. For instance, let's say I want to compare these two molecules and see which one is more acidic. Well, let's react both of them as acids. The top one right here, if he acts as an acid, he'll turn into H plus and have that corresponding conjugate base. The bottom reaction, CH4, if he donates a proton, this is what he would look like acting as an acid. Now, what we do most of the time when we're comparing acid strengths is remember we like to look at the conjugate base. And let's analyze each one here. First, let's analyze this guy right here. Let's determine his hybridization. He happens to be sp hybridized, which remember means that his orbitals are half s and half p. Let's look at the bottom conjugate base here. Remember his hybridization is sp3 hybridized, which means he's one part s, three parts p, or 25% s, 75% p. Now, just blindly using the rule of thumb here, we said the more s character, the more acidic. That means the top conjugate base has more S character, making him a more stable conjugate base. He has 50% S compared to the bottom's conjugate base being only 25% S. That means the bottom conjugate base is less stable, which means that the top reaction is more favored and the bottom reaction is less favored. And remember what that means, the more favored reaction gives up more H+, which simply means that this species right here is more acidic. He's the stronger acid, he would have the lower pKa. Now that's how we would quickly think about this on an exam, but let's talk about the theory here. We should also know why the top conjugate base is more stable. Well, let's look at a comparison here. Let's say the carbon on the left here is sp hybridized and this other one is sp3 hybridized. We saw in a previous online lecture that the sp hybridized CH bond would be shorter than the sp3 hybridized CH bond. And let's place their orbitals here. This would be the sp orbital for him and this would be the sp3 orbital for this carbon. Now let's do this. Let's have them act as acids which means they're going to give up their H plus and this is what's going to be left behind, the conjugate base, or in other words, we're going to have a lone pair of electrons sitting on top of a carbon. Now notice the electrons right here. We can say they're more hugged up to the carbon and these electrons over here would be further away from the carbon. This is simply due to the relative sizes of sp and sp3 hybridized orbitals. Now, another way to think about electronegativity, it measures how much an atom could bring electrons to itself. The more you're able to do that, the more electronegative you are. So thinking about that, that basically means an sp hybridized carbon is more electronegative than an sp3 hybridized carbon, simply because the sp hybridized carbon does have a greater ability to bring the electrons closer to the carbon atom. In fact, I'd like you to know this rule of thumb right here. When it comes to relative electronegativities due to hybridization, let's know that sp is greater than sp2, which is greater than sp3. And because of this, this is also the trend for relative acidity. So, going back to our example here, that's why the top conjugate base is more stable. He's simply more electronegative, therefore the top reaction is more favored. So what have we learned here? We've learned another factor that affects pKa and that is hybridization. The more S character, the stronger the acid.